Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Welcome. The month of August has arrived and Epic has given us free assets. So these are the assets that they're giving to us this month. We have the big office pack, an open world RPG toolkit, storage house set, my SQL integration and a cartoon water shader. So let's take a closer look at these. So starting off, we have the big office studio here. You can see we have the overview map of all the different assets that are consisting in this pack. So you have everything from small details like yeah, waste paper baskets and fire extinguishers and different types of seatings. And you have screens and chairs and desks and pens and curtains. And you also have these cubicle kind of areas and you have staircases and you have toilets. You essentially have everything that you need to create a very nice looking uh, office with. And let's see what they actually created themselves. Uh, this one. So here we go. This is the asset. Let's get all of the icons away. This is the office space that they create with all of the assets. So it's a very nice looking office. It's very stylish, very luxurious at the same time, uh, very cozy feeling to it. And it's a pretty large one, you even have a balcony here. And yeah, so the, um, the assets are quite varied and very nice and cohesive as a whole. So these assets are all ranging between uh, 100 and 5,000 in uh, vertex counts. They are about 250, actually 268 unique meshes, and they are all scaled to the American skeleton. So they have texture resolutions for 1K, 2K and 4K, it says. So this should be pretty handy for you if this is something that you're looking to create. Next up, we have the open world RPG toolkit. Uh, if we play this one, we get presented with a menu. We can start the game here and you get thrown into a world here. So you have some foliage and trees on this wall. Uh, you have this prompt to use the H key to bring up this control menu here. So you can see some of the controls that are available to you. Uh, you can see that if you move to a different area, you get awarded experience points. So they have something like that implemented and you can see our level in the top right corner there. We have a quest system, so you can walk up to characters and then take tasks for them and you get the quests to follow up with. In this case, we have this little item that we're supposed to interact with. Interacting with it will allow us to complete said task and we get awarded experience points. They also have a chest here which we can loot. And you have this um, sort of uh, lock picking mechanism here so you can manipulate the lock and try to get that open. Uh, maybe. Like so, there we go. And you get some rewards and experience points and stuff like that. So there are a few different systems available in this project here. Things that are available are a world map. Uh, they have a compass, so you can see in the bottom left there with the minimap. They have a quest system, and uh, they are also mentioning that the compass and quest system are replicated. They have an interaction system that is replicated. They have an eagle, apparently, that you can spawn and control that's replicated. They have the menu, inventory, and money and experience system that is all replicated. Um, so, essentially, if all of this is accurate, uh, it, it feels like it would be a good base for if you want to create something that uh, is open world and maybe co-op or player versus player, that kind of thing. You might be able to get a lot of systems or have some systems to look at to uh, how, how it can be done, essentially. Next up, we have the storage house set. So this is the overview map where we see all of the different assets that are available. And you can see that there is some uh, duplication between them and just using different materials and such. But for the most part, it looks like there is a lot of variation here when it comes to items, although there is a lot of duplication here, but that's probably just to make you uh, see the different variations that are available with the pre-made materials that they have in the asset pack. Uh, but 
Yeah, there is a lot of different things here and you can probably create quite an impressive office space with this. So let's take a look at what they have done. So here we have the demonstration level. Yeah, let's remove the icons. You can see that all of these assets coming together here gives a very nice storage kind of look to them. And you have all kinds of areas here where you can, okay, some of, the, some of them are off limits. But essentially, yeah, it looks like uh, here's uh, some storage stuff that has gone awry. Uh, so you have the different shelves here and the different items on them and stuff. So it probably has everything you need if you need to create a large storage like area. The pack says that it includes 423 static meshes, uh, which of 347 are props and 76 are structures. It cont contains uh, 196 master materials and material instances. Uh, I'm not so sure about the static meshes, but I could be wrong. It looked like much less than that. Um, but regardless, it should be pretty feature complete for this specific area if this is what you're looking to create. Next we have the cartoon water shader asset pack. And this is the overview map, so this is essentially what you're getting. And this might not look like a whole lot, but it looks can be a little bit deceiving because uh, even though there are not many static meshes available in this asset, this pack is mainly about uh, the water and the materials that you get through that. So if we open up one of these demo levels, for example, and we spawn a little bit above below ground, you can see that this is essentially what it could look like when you're making use of it. So it's giving a very idyllic kind of scenery to it. And if you were to play, you can as well see that it has uh, some buoyancy and such on objects in the water. Although it looks a little bit funky, so I'm not sure how how good it is to make use of that. But it, it might be sufficient. Uh, regardless, what uh, this pack mainly brings is going to be the materials. So if you go to, let's see, cartoon water shader, materials, and let's see, water. You see here you have a bunch of different materials for water, for lakes, for oceans, for rivers, for waterfalls, and also some decals. So a lot of different shaders to allow you to get this sort of anime looking uh, or stylized looking water feel, which is very pretty and fitting for certain types of games. Um, so this might for sure be something to, to look at if that's a style that you're trying to achieve. Next up, we have this stylized Egypt pack. Now, this one isn't in the free for the month pack. This will be in the section for permanently free. So it will be in that section and you don't need to pick it up this month if you don't want to, unlike the others. Um, but I'm mentioning it as well because it was released at the same time. Uh, so here you can see we have a sort of stylized type of scenery that's supposedly supposed to be in Egypt. And I might buy that because I see pyramids and such. You also have some backdrop elements of, around here as well. Um, you can even go into the pyramids a little bit here and see that there is not a whole lot of stuff going on in here anyway. But anyway, this pack is consisting of approximately a little bit over 100 uh, different static meshes. And it has resolutions for 1K, 2K, and 4K. And if this is the type of style that you're after, this might even work well together with some other permanently free assets on um, the Epic Store. There are some, um, uh, some Eastern, Middle Eastern looking uh, packs there, I do recall, that might work well together with this possibly. So if that's what you're after, this might be a good pack to look into. The very last asset of the free for the month is going to do, be the MySQL integration or MySQL integration, if you prefer that pronunciation. So this is, of course, then going to be a plugin that allows you to communicate with a database. And you can see the 
the features that are available here. So it, it allows for asynchronous connection uh, to your server and it can make use of it through blueprints as you can see demonstrated here. And you have a documentation available here which takes you to this page where it goes through all the different parts that you need to set up and what all the parameters that it needs are as well. So it should be fairly straightforward if this is something that you need in your project, either uh, needing to read information dynamically from a database or if it's a matter of storing uh, things persistently on a database for some purpose like uh, leaderboards or scores or uh, other kinds of data that you want to save on a per user basis and such. This is definitely something that can be useful for you. So make sure to check this one out. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.